So, let's talk Modern Warfare 2. I spent the week since launch playing the game, and I've logged around 40 hours of playtime already. I've completed the campaign, played on every map in multiplayer multiple times, and I've completed every Special Ops mission on two stars at the very least. With that being said, let's jump straight into this comprehensive review and talk about the campaign. Infinity would have described the campaign in Modern Warfare 2 as the next generation of Call of Duty. There's been a lot of debate online about whether Modern Warfare 2 meets this high bar of criticism, and after playing it through, some missions a couple of times, I'd have to say that while I don't think that this campaign feels like the new generation, it does feel like a refinement of what came before. I'll only be showing you guys footage from the first mission or two of the campaign to avoid spoilers, but if you want to avoid that, you're more than welcome to listen to this as more of a podcast type experience, as the gameplay isn't hugely relevant to what I'll actually be saying. Haven't gotten all of that out of the way, I think that the Modern Warfare 2 campaign is the best one I've played in a long time, and it certainly reaches the immensely high bar set by 2019's Modern Warfare. The campaign opens with the mission set in the dark. It's an incredible showcase for not only the more stealth focused gameplay of Modern Warfare 2's campaign, but also for the incredible new lighting and graphics engines created by Infinity Ward for the future of Call of Duty. Putting the stealth aside for a second, it's worth me taking a second here just to tell you about the graphics of Modern Warfare 2. My god, I don't think I've ever played a game that looks as lifelike as this. It's almost photorealistic. In fact, sometimes it appears to be photorealistic. It's simply astounding achievement in graphical prowess. I'm sure you've heard of the Amsterdam section of the early campaign, and the buzz online about it has been huge. Earlier today, I watched a video comparing Amsterdam in real life to the Amsterdam featured in Modern Warfare 2, and it's a true credit to Infinity War that I genuinely struggled to identify which one was which. Seriously, look it up for yourselves, the video is in the description if you want to check it out. Going back to the first mission, there's fire and smoke all over the place, and the lighting and smoke effects are simply stunning. Really, it's a sight to behold, and I'd say this is one of, if not the best looking game of this generation. Anyway, this is a Call of Duty game, and while the graphics may be gorgeous, let's get into the real meat of the campaign and talk about gameplay. Call of Duty campaigns are often criticised for their sameness and their similarities to previous games, as well as a lack of gameplay variation. While I can't say that it's a hugely unique campaign compared to previous entries, I can say that, gameplay-wise, there's a massive amount of variation here. Call of Duty has been stuck in a rut for a while now, and if you want to see my in-depth analysis as to why this is, then you can check out my video on the state of Call of Duty in 2022 pre-Modern Warfare 2, which is both on screen and in the description. In short, the last two entries in the series have had either highly controversial or extremely uninteresting campaigns. It's a theme that's been going back since 2016's Infinite Warfare, excluding Modern Warfare 2019 of course, which had a truly unique campaign, but a universally panned multiplayer. It's so nice to see them, that Activision have finally overcome their block on creating a good campaign. Modern Warfare 2's campaign is genuinely the best I've played in years. There's a real blockbuster feel to the entire experience, and the variation assists this hugely. You'll go from crash sites to the bustling city streets of Amsterdam, to a rural town on the Mexican border, to name but a handful of the locations on offer. You won't just be doing the regular run and gun either. There's a fantastic sniping mission around midway through the campaign that I won't talk about here due to spoiler reasons, but I'll tell you now that it's a callback to one of Call of Duty's best campaign missions ever. There's nothing here that will be completely new to any Call of Duty veterans, but there's certainly enough variation and advancement on previous ideas that make Modern Warfare 2's campaign a recent highlight. It's not one of the series' absolute best, but it is a return to form that Call of Duty desperately needed. There's a handful of new mechanics on offer here too, such as in the Alone mission, where you experience a type of guerrilla warfare unlike any that you've experienced through Call of Duty before. Some will say that it's shoehorned in, but I don't agree with this. I think that the new mechanic fits perfectly in with what the mission is, even if it does rear its head later in a late game mission where I have to admit that it does feel wholly unnecessary, and holds up the conclusion to the campaign just long enough to slightly spoil the momentum this game builds over its mostly excellent final few missions. All in all, this is a very solid campaign that most people will really enjoy. I'd actually recommend playing it before diving into the multiplayer, as it helps me introduce you slowly into the new movement mechanics that Modern Warfare 2 offers. 
Speaking of, let's dive into the multiplayer. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. This is difficult. I really want to wholeheartedly recommend this campaign to you, but technical issues and missing features just hold it back from being the most functional and fun Call of Duty multiplayer so far. Let's do a quick breakdown on what these issues are so that I can get to giving this multiplayer the praise that it rightly deserves. So, the reason that I can't wholeheartedly endorse a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer is that it just doesn't work properly. Frequent crashes, party issues, a broken shooting system and a poor UI really let the experience down. The game also hasn't launched with a rank mode or any party game modes at all. It just feels slightly feature incomplete and the lack of a rank mode is an issue that I'll explain in the last complaining section of this review. And that's SBMM. So SBMM, as most of you may know, stands for skill based matchmaking. It's what many competitive games use in order to rank their players in skill order and make sure that all players are playing against players of their skill level. In most games, I don't have a problem with this, as it's generally pretty laxly tuned, so it doesn't make a huge difference. It's also generally confined to the ranked or competitive modes of other games, as the casual modes usually remain separate. Modern Warfare 2, however, uses SBMM in its casual mode. It's so ridiculously finely tuned that a single game where you play well will land you in a lobby full of dolphin diving, head glitching, which is supposed to be removed by the way, chilly heatwave Dorito stained sweat. Jokes aside, this is actually so frustrating. I really just want to heap praise on what's otherwise a magnificently designed multiplayer, but these issues really can make or break the game for you, and I feel like to review this game responsibly I really need to tell you about them in full. The SBMN does really great on me, and it's the reason that I wish this game launched with a rank mode. The skill based portion of the game could be confined there, and then it would allow for both a more advanced progression into the game at launch and also a casual mode that would allow people that didn't want to play at their best every single game to have a more chilled out Call of Duty experience. Those are my thoughts on it anyway, but you can let me know if you agree or not down in the comments below. <sighs> anyway, that's all the complaining I've got to do today done. With that out of the way, let's get to what I love about this multiplayer. Technical issues aside, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has the best designed multiplayer of any Call of Duty in a very long time. Again, I must use Modern Warfare 2019 as an exception to this rule. The map design is incredible, every gun feels unique in subtle but significant ways, and sound design is a particular highlight of this year's entry. It's a good thing too, as it's rumoured that this will be the last mainline Call of Duty release until 2024, so this multiplayer really needed to be excellent. In my opinion, it achieves this. Let's talk about how. Modern Warfare 2's maps are the best I've ever experienced at any Call of Duty game's launch. There's only one I really don't like, being Mexican Border Control. Why oh why did Infinity Ward make a map so tailored to campers and snipers with only very few counters? That map aside, every other map is incredible. There's different opportunities for combat at different ranges in every map. For example, in Farm 18 you can choose to snipe from rooftops, run assault on foot in the mid range, or go close combat through buildings. Every map is like this. My favourite maps however, are Zakwa Hydroelectric and Mercado Las Almas. I may have butchered those names completely, but my point is that both of these maps are incredibly well designed. Hydroelectric has underwater tunnels that allows for surprise attacks and underwater combat, whereas Mercado has a corridor that's straight in the middle of the map that turns into a hot zone for combat with a tug of war for control that sometimes lasts all game. It's fantastic and there are moments like this to be had on almost every map in the game and they arrive both quickly and frequently. I was also surprised to see just how well every mode fitted into the game. So let's talk modes, which ones were included at launch and which ones truly stand out. So 
So, a launch, Modern Warfare 2 includes <sighs> Team Deathmatch 3 4, Kill Confirm, Domination, Hardpoint, Search and Destroy, Knockouts, Headquarters, and Prisoner Rescue. <sighs> Every one of those game modes is a joy to play. My favourites are Knockouts, Search and Destroy, Hardpoint, and of course a little bit of FFA. TDM doesn't even need to be said, it's fun no matter what map you're on. Even modes like Domination and Hardpoint, which have a real reputation for sometimes not working on certain maps, work on every single map. It's a true credit to the map design that every game mode is an intense tug of war right the way through, depending on teammates ability of course. I actually really enjoy the new modes as well, they're nothing hugely new, but Knockout, where one team holds a bag of cash until the end of the round to win, and Prisoner Rescue, where one team holds hostages and the other must rescue them, are particular highlights. Modern Warfare 2 may not have party game modes at launch, but it does have all that it needs to be a great time, including a couple of new ways to play. There are two big game modes this time around. One is Ground War, which is in Modern Warfare 2019, but the other is Invasion. Invasion is actually my new favourite way to play Call of Duty. The way it works is it's a 20v20 mode, but with another 20 AI on each team. It's kind of similar to Attrition in Titanfall 1, if you played that. I played a lot of that mode, so Invasion for me is like coming home. Each team has a score they need to get to, and killing an AI bot is worth 1 point, whereas killing another player is worth 5. This makes sense actually, considering the total stupidity of the AI. I don't mind that though, as they make the mode seem a lot bigger and more cinematic without being irritating and overly chaotic. These big modes are the only new ways to play. Welcome to third person mode. So, Modern Warfare 2 comes with the third person mode, and I've actually had a fantastic time with it. When I start to get tired of being murdered in normal Call of Duty, I just switch over to third person and it feels like a totally different game. I must admit, I have been using it to level up my melee weapons, as players don't seem anything like as good on there. I've already managed to unlock the gold camo on my right shield and my M4, and I'm almost there with a knife too. I gotta be honest, I do play like a little bit of a scumbag, and I am that guy that will go around knifing me everyone. But it's all fun in games. Speaking of weapons, I'm weapon customization. It's in the game, and it's good. That is a shocking segue, but anyway, let's go over the new and improved gunsmith. For the final section of my review of the multiplayer parts of Modern Warfare 2, we have the Gunsmith. This year, it works very differently, and it's proven controversial, but I actually really like it. It's a system that revolves around platforms and receivers. That probably makes no sense, but what I mean by that is that weapons are based on platforms, so by levelling up one weapon, you're directly making progress towards unlocking another. I think this works brilliantly, as it forces you to use more of the arsenal, because guns aren't just unlocked through progression anymore. It's the same story with some attachments as well, as some attachments share a platform, so when you unlock the foregrip section of, say, the F-Tac Recon, you're allowed to use all your unlocked attachments from the M4. I think this system actually works really well. It's just a shame that the reward for maxing out your weapon, attachment tuning, crashes the game. I really do think that this new system makes progressing in Modern Warfare 2 a lot more rewarding, as you really feel like you're not relying on the same few weapons. Almost every gun in the game is viable, so trying them all out is a must. Overall, I'd have to say that I really, really love the multiplayer of Modern Warfare 2. It's fast, it's tactical, it's snappy, and it feels more immersive than, in my opinion, any Call of Duty multiplayer before it. The future of Call of Duty looks bright if Activision continues to move forward with a stellar map design in this game in future entries. Last, but certainly not least, we have the biggest surprise of Modern Warfare 2, Special Ops. I won't give away too much from Special Ops, but what I will say is that it's a fantastic way to play Modern Warfare 2. There are currently three missions available, and for spoiler reasons, I'll only be showing gameplay from the first one and a brief scene in the second mission. 
It feels like more of the best parts of the campaign, and every mission is actually surprisingly difficult. It took me several tries to complete the missions to a standard that I was happy with. I've now done all three, and I can't wait for Infinity War to add more. I really hope that they do, because Special Ops is a mode I've never really taken advantage of before, but I wish that I had, because it feels like a smaller co-op campaign. It's great, but you'll have to go and check it out for yourself for any more details. The last thing that I'll say is that it provides a surprising amount of replayability, and I suspect that I'll be playing a lot more of Special Ops in the future. So, this review has dragged on a bit, so thank you so much if you made it this far. I hope that I covered everything major about the game, and that it helps you decide on whether to buy it, or even if it simply gives you a new perspective on the game. Let me just tie it up with a short conclusion, and then I'll let you go. So, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is, in my opinion, a fantastic sequel to 2019's Modern Warfare. I think that it outshines its technical problems, as it's just so damn fun and well designed. As a complete package, I think that this will eventually stand among the greats of the series, and for now it's an excellent start to the new generation of Call of Duty. It's a great representation of the future of Call of Duty, and if they sort the SBMM issues out, then it's a future that I'm incredibly excited to see. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. I'll be back to talk more Call of Duty when Warzone 2.0 releases in a couple of weeks, so if you want to see more of that, then remember to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Until then guys, stay frosty and I'll catch you later. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who got to this point in the video. I really appreciate every single one of you and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care guys. Peace.